when healthcare costs grow more quickly, wages grow more slowly. Now, does that mean the employer system is bad and that there's nothing to be gained from an employer mandate? No, right now, employer pools are the only way that we do risk pooling for people who aren't covered by public insurance plans. Anything that eroded the employer market should be accompanied by something that promotes another way of risk pooling, either in uh, reform of the non-group market, risk-adjusted vouchers. There are lots of alternatives to that. But that's something to be very wary of in eroding the employer market. But it's that risk pooling function that we want to be looking towards in the bills, not kicking in of extra resources from the employers. There's no secret pool of profits that we'll be drawing from. The last way that a lot of these bills try to cover more people is through expansions of Medicaid, up the income distribution. And that is one of the more expensive provisions of some of the bills because right now, Medicaid is a joint federal state program. It would remain a joint federal state program, but the federal government picks up somewhere between 50 and 85 percent of the tab, depending on which state you live in. And so most of the bills under consideration put almost all of the costs on the federal government of the expansion population for Medicaid. That raises all sorts of other issues because the states that had already expanded don't want to be at a disadvantage compared with their stingier neighbors who hadn't expanded already. So that's a real political economy debate among the states and between the states and the federal government. All of those provisions can be very expensive because covering the uninsured never pays for itself. It would be nice to think that reductions in emergency department utilization, more efficient use of primary and preventive care would actually save us money in the long run so that these bills would pay for themselves. They don't pay for themselves if if we're honest about it, and the CBO is honest about it and says, no, you need to raise about a trillion dollars. That brings us to the second question of where you raise the money. The lesson that I take from the first issue I discussed is that it's not just about raising money. The straightforward thing is transferring money. If all we were trying to do was get low-income people some more money to buy health care, we would raise the money through general revenues. That's how we pay for transfers. We have a lot of general revenue tools at our disposal. You could do an income tax. You could do all sorts of different taxes to just raise more money. The reason we're looking to the health care system to raise the money rather than just general revenues is because we know the system is not efficient and that there are ways you might be able to get some money out of the existing system that would lower the total cost in a way that promotes higher value care. And that is the thornier problem. I think the bills on the table don't go far enough in terms of payment reform. Medicare is the major player in this space, in a lot of this space. And if Medicare could get resources used more efficiently, then that would spill over to private plans as well. All of the cost-cutting measures that are on the table shouldn't be thought of as the same because some will increase value and some won't. I'll leave you with a thought on the interesting case of taxing insurers who offer really expensive plans. This is a very clever political idea, I think. Economists across the spectrum think that the way we currently subsidize employer-provided insurance is inefficient because we subsidize people with the highest income and the most expensive policies at the expense of people who don't have access to employer-provided insurance. That seems both regressive and inefficient. This, you know, Kerry proposal to tax expensive policies is a clever workaround to political objections to taxing health insurance. It's very hard to say the solution to our expensive health care problem is to tax health benefits and make you pay more. That seems counterintuitive, even though economists think it's a great idea. Saying, well, we're going to tax the insurers who offer those plans. We're not taxing you. We're taxing those bad insurers. Of course, that gets passed right through to individuals, but it's a little opaque in a way that makes it more politically palatable but it means that you can't do it based on income in the way that you could if you were to directly tax the individuals who have the more expensive policies. You could then do it in a more progressive way. So you sacrifice a little bit of progressivity, but you still go partway towards the goal of getting more value out of the system. That's an interesting case study in the balance of politics and economics. I'll stop there.